Hi guys, welcome back to part two of the angle plate build. In the last episode, we cut the raw stock square into size, and then we cut it into three pieces. And in this episode, we're going to be getting those pieces, the, the sides of those pieces, um, square and flat. And then we're going to put some slots in. So I'm just starting out on that process with, uh, with my roughing end mill again taking off the bulk of the of the waist stock on each side to get them close and uh, you saw me touching off in multiple places there just to uh, see what the taper was and, and, and uh, what the high point was basically and uh, I'm just going to run down each side of them so four passes per plate and get them close doing some measuring here um, trying to get them to three and seven eighths just like all the rest of the sides so they should all be close to the same length when it's finished not that it really matters time for a little bit of cleanup the chips from the rougher suck up very nicely with the vacuum To do the final cut on the sides, I needed to set them in there square to the face. And the back face is set in square by the back of the vice jaw. And here I'm using my square to get the other side square. If you're wondering what it is, you can see it. It's a Starrett Master Precision Square and by far the squarest thing in our shop. And uh, so I'm just bumping the plates up against that and using the lights to, uh, to check that the gap is even the whole way down. And it, it's not perfect, but the mill's so loose that I can't get them really any closer running the dial indicator down it. So it works really well. Um, and after that's done, just come back with the face mill uh, running about 1700 RPM again. And that cleans up the faces pretty nice. The quill spline shafts in these uh, bridge ports and their clones tend to be a generally loose fit so on interrupted cuts like this they like to bang a lot and, and make a lo lot of noise um, so upping the RPM and taking a small depth of cut like that I'm able to avoid it which is good there sure is a lot of repetitive cutting when you're making three identical parts. This facing procedure is done six times. And now just like before, we're chamfering it. I won't show too much of this because it's the exact same way as we did the other edges. All right, we're finally ready to put some slots in. And uh, I'm going to start out by edge finding it. Um, to, I'm just going to use the half function on my DRO to find the center as 
commonly done and then just um, edge find off the back and use a standard offset to get that on zero. For you newbies out there, run your edge finders at at least 1200, I've heard between 1200 and 1700 RPM to get optimal jump. I don't like plunging in mills, so I decided to drill some starter holes in it before I came in with the end mill. So this is a half inch um, spotting drill. It's actually a carbide tip drill, but apparently it had a uh, chip or something in one of the carbides and it wasn't doing the greatest. It worked. Then I change it out for a uh, 5 8 No. Just under 5 8 drill bit um, to put the through hole in. You know, it appeared to be a fresh, brand new, hardly ever used drill bit. It was real sharp. They really didn't like uh, drilling with no pilot hole, and I, I've had generally pretty good luck with these bigger drills with no pilot hole, but this one didn't want to go for some reason. So I went ahead and took it out and tossed a quarter inch bit in and put a pilot hole in all of them. So we're finally ready to mill the slots in, so I grabbed out the uh, same old roughing end mill again. And another uh, beginner tip is when you are when you have excess end mill length and you can get away with it, you know, you won't hit your vise or anything, go ahead and lower the end mill on past the work and use the upper part of it. It's a lot more rigid and you use uh, the part of the end mill that rarely gets used to cut, so it's often sharper wear the end mill a little bit more even. When you can always choke up, get your end mill as close to the collet, use short of end mill as possible, and when you're through slotting, choke up as much as possible. I left a tiny bit sticking out there just so I could see what was going on. I'm really impressed with uh, actually how well this setup is doing. Um, getting no indication of chatter. Uh, the only thing limiting me from going faster right here is um, spin the horsepower. I, I, if I if I fed it any harder, the mill will actually bog down. But I could probably go 50% or maybe even 100% faster. Um, I ended up getting it down on some of the later slots to about a minute 10 per slot. And so I figure for about what maybe two thirds of a cubic inch of metal in just over a minute. That's that's a pretty good re removal rate for one horsepower. And I'm very happy with it. I know John Saunders calls this slotting the stupid way, but, um, and no offense to him, he, he knows a lot more about machining than I do, 
but if anyone can slot faster with a one horsepower machine I would certainly like to see it. After I finished roughing out the slots with the roughing end mill, I came back with a 5 8 inch 4 flute high speed steel end mill to cut the slots to size. And uh, if I did this again, I probably don't, I don't think I'll do it this way because it didn't really cut that happy. Uh, it didn't leave that good of a finish on the sides. Maybe somebody can school me on this, but with the end mill straight centered in the slot, it was trying to climb mill the whole time. And I've had that happen to me before, and I don't exactly know why. It seems like the cutting portion should be balanced, but it always tries to pull. Um, the other thing I also expected doing it this way was when I when I got to the end of the cut, I expected to start chattering like a banshee, but it didn't. It was a uh, five eighths in middle was actually willing to cut the full width, full height, in one pass, just slowly. You know, it takes a lot more horsepower to push the straight flutes than the roughing fruits. So that was really impressive for me. I couldn't help but include footage from the second one as well. It's just fun to watch those big piles of metal shavings being created. It also seems to make a pretty neat sound when you add the cutting oil. Kind of happy little chirps. There's the pile of chips from just those two cuts. Just a few steps that's left now. Got to do a little bit of deburring, and I needed to grab a uh, a knife deburring, little triangular thing, to get a spot out so I could run my. I don't even know what you call those things, the ones where you go around in a circle and it cuts the burr off, and getting it nice and smooth. And there's the two of them together. Looking pretty decent. There's the pile of chips from just the five cuts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.